Hi everybody and welcome back to the Fruit of the Spirit, part of our Every Day in the Spirit campaign. And uh, this is part three, we're going to be talking about patience. Yeah. My least favorite topic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of mine too. So do you want to open us in prayer and we'll get Absolutely. started? Absolutely. God, I just, uh, I pray that you would um, help us to look at the, the fruit of patience as, as something that... Um, something new God and something um, to help us to see it with fresh eyes um, and not something that's that's um, that we don't like I pray God that you would uh, um, open up your word to us that you would speak through the lesson today and um, really generate a discussion God that um, that, that brings this fruit um, to the surface and, and really helps us to deepen our patience in Jesus name amen amen Okay, so we talked about peace, uh, and, and what happens is when I lose my peace, that's when I need patience, right? If, I, if I've got peace, then I'm usually a fairly patient person. Yeah, that's true. But when you lose that, that's when you really need your patience. And Paul says, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience. So we want to talk about patience and, and what it is and, and maybe a little bit about what it's not. This word is interesting because it comes from two different words. One is the word for long, and the other is the word for soul. So literally, it's long-souled. Hmm. Or as the older translations put it, and this is a bullet point on your outlines, long-suffering. I actually like that because that's what patience is, right? That is aptly named, <laughs> I think, because it does feel like... You have to suffer. How, how long can you suffer? <laughs> that's right. you got to suffer fools for a long time. You're going to be patient. Yes. Yeah, here's what one uh, a Greek scholar said about it. He said, long-suffering is that quality of self-restraint in the face of provocation, which does not hastily retaliate or promptly punish. It is the opposite of of anger. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't say never there. It just says it, it doesn't hastily retaliate or promptly punish, right? Mm -hmm. So it doesn't mean you can't ever get angry because Jesus got angry, right? That's true. Then he was patient. So this is, remember the fruit of the Spirit is part, is the character of Christ that's being built within us. So yeah, it's not that you can never be angry and be a spirit-filled Christian. It's that you can't, if you're doing it all the time, then you probably have an issue and mm -hmm. you need to look at it closely. Um, so that's the idea, it's long, it takes a long time, you have a long, slow fuse before mm -hmm. you blow up, as opposed to some people who just, boom, you know, they just blow up right away, very quickly. Um, and so that's the idea, that the Holy Spirit's going to give me the ability to just be cool for a long time before, you know, I kind of lose control of myself. And that's a good thing, we, we, we do all need that, and some of us, more than others, obviously, you know, but... But, you know, it depends on the, the, your personality and how you're built. But either way, everybody needs this fruit of the Spirit in their lives. Mm -hmm. So, I can be patient. This is one thing that we think we need to understand when I rely on God's mercy. Now, again, we're going back to the mercy or the grace of God, which we will do throughout this whole series. Because um, that's where it comes from. The grace of God, it gives birth to the fruit of the Spirit in my life. It's a gift from God, mm -hmm. right? I don't deserve it, and I certainly don't earn it. And if you go way back to Exodus, God talks about this in Exodus 34, 6. When he appears to Moses, he says, The Lord passed before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Mm -hmm. So I like that he's slow to anger, not that he doesn't ever get angry, and that he's abounding in, self, uh, in ste I'm sorry, steadfast love and mm -hmm. faithfulness. So you'll never have to be more, you know, more patient than God is with you. <laughs> Just a nice reminder. There you go. Yeah, and how patient do you think God has to be with us? I mean, when you think about it, how many times should you have been like smacked down and yet God didn't do it? Yeah. Or how many times did he deliver you from something that you really deserved and you had earned a punishment or something and yet God somehow intervenes and, and rescues you? Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, that's, that's uh, the character of God, and that's the character he wants to build within each, one, each and every one of us. And uh, Peter says in 1 Peter 3.20, Because they formerly did not obey, when God's patience waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is eight persons, were brought safely through the water. So it took a long time to build Noah's Ark. It was 120 years yeah, or something crazy. like that. Yeah, it took a long, long time. We have stuff falling down here in the studio, <laughs> which is the fellowship hall. So if you hear any noises, just don't, don't worry. Uh, <laughs> um, he, he waited. He was patient. 
But eventually, of course, he did act. His wrath did come. Mm -hmm. And so that's the important thing to think. I, I think being patient doesn't mean I never get angry. It just means I don't get angry quickly and I don't get angry from purely selfish motives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and part two on your outline, the fruit, this fruit keeps me from quitting my ministry. Yeah. I think this is really crucial because that's, that's a huge, I think that's a huge reason why we need to develop patience is because God's, yeah. God's prepared works for us to do, and we can't complete them without this fruit of the Spirit. That's Believe me, sure. I work with teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> there have been definitely times when it, it you know, my patience is definitely tried, yeah. but it's, it's, I think, you know, you have a long fuse, like you said, but not only that, even when you do get angry or lose your cool, it's recognizing that you're not going to stay there for long, that you're going to recalibrate, turn to the Lord and reestablish that fuse, right. <laughs> the long fuse again. Um, and so first Thessalonians one, three, it says, remembering before our God and father, your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. I like that it says labor of love yeah. because it's hard work. Love looks like something. Yeah. You know, I, I was a teacher for three years. It was not my favorite job, but I remember thinking I would be a really good teacher if it wasn't for the students. <laughs> like I would be awesome at this job. But it's, that's what makes it hard is that you're dealing with people with all of their faults and their brokenness. And that's that's what really stretches you and tests you. But that's... I, I know pastors that say the same kind of thing about their church members, yeah. too. So I've heard people say almost exactly that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, Matthew 10, 22, it says, And you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. You know, that's so um, important to remember that, you know, God does not promise us an easy time of it. No. On the contrary, no. he promises that you're going to have trials and troubles and when you're in ministry, is dealing with people, and anytime you're dealing with people, right. people are rough and they push your buttons, and yep. um, and there will always be people to try your patience. But what's amazing about it is you can't actually develop long patience without people who try your patience. You know, yep. it's like it's like building muscle. You can't do it if there's no resistance. So you right. have to get resistance in order to to learn how to have a long fuse. Which it's the long way to learn it. It's no one loves. No. Well, some people love working out, but right. <laughs> I don't think anybody loves exercising their patient's muscle. But I think it, in the end, it actually develops a longer, we develop a longer fuse. We develop yeah. um, into uh, more patient people. And patience is a necessity if I'm going to fulfill my ministry. And everybody has a ministry whether you work for a church or not. Yeah. Everybody has a ministry. Everyone has has things that God has purposed for them to do, ways for them to serve people. Um, but you can't do that without patience. Yeah, no, there's no way. All, all ministry, because all ministry involves people, e and, and all ministry involves me, myself, right? So I have to be patient not only with others, but I have to be patient with myself and my own feelings. Because if I get angry at myself and just beat myself up and condemn myself, that's not helping anything at all. It just makes the situation worse. So you have to learn to be patient with yourself and patient with others as you work through you know these things to serve god because it's mm -hmm. it's ministry is a lot of things but easy is not one of them no and how often do people leave ministries because they get offended yeah. by someone yeah. instead of oh, recognizing yeah. that god is trying to produce a fruit of patience and right. that you're meant to endure that you are meant to, to stay there um i think we i think a lot of times the enemy uproots us from places where god has planted us because we don't have the fruit of patience oh absolutely I, i've seen so many people quit ministries they're just so frustrated yeah and um first thessalonians five fourteen says and we urge you brothers admonish the idle encourage the faint-hearted help the weak be patient with them all because <laughs> you're going to find people in all you know parts of the spectrum then they're all walks of life and going through all kinds and you guaranteed you will have people that drive you crazy yeah <laughs> that know how to push your buttons and i think it's a benefit that the lord trusts us with those people because he's trying to work something out in them but he's also trying to work something out in me and in you he's trying to build patience yeah and that, i think that's important to remember is that ministry is not just about what i do for you or for whoever i'm ministering to it's also about what god does mm -hmm. through that to me mm -hmm. so if i'm feeling frustrated 
or whatever in, in a situation I need to reflect and say, okay, what is God trying to teach me here about me, not just about you? Maybe you do need to change or they need to shape up. Your kids need to pay attention or whatever, you yeah. know? But it also speaks to you. So Absolutely. So you have to look at both sides of the coin, not just, you know, the side that's, you know, facing them. You have to look at your own side Absolutely. as well. Absolutely, yeah. I think ministry reveals our faults and oh, our... Yeah our shortcomings so that we then have to turn and rely on God. That's the beauty of it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So the truth is, though, no matter how patient you are, you are eventually going to get angry. You are going to lose your temper. And sometimes maybe you should get angry. Jesus got angry and he had righteous anger. So the question really then is, number three on your outline, is how do I handle my anger? Because you're going to get angry, okay? It's going to happen. So let's take a look at that. In Ephesians 4... Uh, 25 through 27, I, I love this passage. Paul says, Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin, so it is possible, and do not let the sun go down on your angry, and give no opportunity to the devil. Now, I'm, I, I'm a guy who thinks the devil gets a lot more credit than he deserves for a lot of things, but don't ever, don't, ever make the mistake of thinking he's not involved in, mm. in your life and in what's going on and in your ministry because he is. And if you open that door to him, he's going to come in. So mm. we have to pay attention to what we're doing or else things are not going to work out well. That's and and I love that he says, don't let the sun go down on your yeah. anger. In other words, like take care of it today. Yep. Take care of the problem. Don't, don't stew on it overnight. Right. You know, there's, you can, you can figure it out and, I mean, we all do. I, this happened to me last week in my youth group. I, I got angry at one of my students because they just kept yapping and distracting everybody. And I, I probably could have handled the situation better, could have spoken with a little more grace. But I immediately, after youth group, went and apologized and talked with them because I didn't want to let it sit there. Right. You know? And so it's, it's going to happen. You are going to have times yeah. uh, when you are going to lose your cool right. and you're going to snap. But I think it's important to then do something about that. Yeah. And the first thing I want you to see, the first bullet point, is speak the truth lovingly without regard to the consequences. One of the things that, and I do this, if I think I'm going to lose my temper, I, I have a tendency to pull back on what I'm going to say so that you don't react in a way that's going to make me get mad at you. <laughs> <laughs> And especially if you're dealing with people you know well, then you know. I'm going to say this, they're going to do that. You, you know how that game plays out. But that's a mistake because then what I end up doing is I, I end up not telling you the truth and you need to know the truth. And I need to tell you the truth because if I'm holding back on you, then that's not good for me either. And, it, and, and I realize I'm failing God because God's told me to speak the truth to you in love. That's why Paul says speaking the truth in love. And the word speaking is actually not in the Greek text. Literally, you would translate that truthing it in love, but that's terrible English, so we can't do that. So they put speaking in there, but he really means all that we do, everything that I do, should be it, it should be the truth and it should be loving. It should be loving. That's the hard yeah, part. I think that's we all the hard part. we all have moments where we're like, okay, you want the truth, but you have to to check yourself and make sure right. that you're packaging it in a way that it's it's not thrown as a fiery dart. <laughs> right. So on the one hand. Don't be afraid of people getting angry at you. And if you have a temper, don't let that fear of that keep you from uh, telling, speaking the truth or living out the truth. Because if you do, you're giving in to the fear of man. Mm -hmm. And that's bad. Because we are supposed to only fear God and serve God. So on the one hand, uh, yeah, everybody has a temper somewhere. And uh, boy, you know, I've learned a lot of patience in my ministry. But when I really lose my temper, which is very rare, thank you. Thank the Lord for that. It's bad. It's really bad. I, I don't like to get to that point. But I can't let fear of that keep me from doing what I need to do. You know, one of the things that's really helped me is that I have learned not to speak the truth while I'm still angry. <laughs> I deal with right. the anger first. I, let, I, I have time with the Lord so that he can deal with my anger. Yeah. And that's when I go back and I speak the truth. I don't try to, I try not to speak the truth in the heat of the moment because right. I realize it it's too hard to speak it lovingly when I'm angry. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, Peter says, but even if you should suffer for righteousness sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. So this idea of the fear of man, don't, don't cave into the fear of men. On the other hand, this is the next bullet point, you need to recognize the power of anger because ooh, anger is so strong and so powerful. Um, Jesus said, uh, he looked around at them with anger. So here's a case where Jesus is angry. 
grieved at their hardness of heart and said to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched it out and his hand was restored. So Jesus did get angry in a second. We'll talk about kind of the most famous example of that. But look here, he's angry here because they were using their interpretation of religion to let people suffer unnecessarily. Mm. And that made him, that, that made God angry because that's not, he didn't give us faith to make us suffer unnecessarily. When, when I see that happen, it frustrates me too. You know, it's like, wow, that is so bad. So I need to realize that when I get angry, there's power there and I need to be very careful how that power is used. Absolutely. Sometimes it can be used for good. Sometimes you like working with your kids. I'm sure there are times where if you kind of raise your voice a little bit or get a little, you know, they kind of snap too and they pay attention. But if you're not careful with that, it can be really bad. That's true. So you don't want to do that. So be aware of your temper and how it works and be aware of the uh, results of it. Mm -hmm. That will motivate you to be more patient, by the way. And understand that it's not always sinful to be angry. Yes. I would say most of the time we, we don't do this very well, but right. it, there are times when um, circumstances justify anger. Um, Look at John 2.14. This is a perfect example. It says, In the temple, this is speaking of Jesus, he found those who were selling oxen and sheep and pigeons and the money changers sitting there and making a whip of cords. He drove them all out of the temple with the sheep and oxen and he poured out the coins and the money changers and overturned their tables. And he told those who sold the pigeons, Take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of trade. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. You know, when, when people say, what would Jesus do? I like to remind <laughs> them that this is within the realm of possibility. Yeah. You know, uh, but I think what's so um, uh, specific here is that, that um, Jesus is angry at, at uh, the injustice and he's angry at the way that, that people are dishonoring the Lord. Right. You know, and so I think there's a difference between just anger and righteous anger. Right. When, when our, I think when our anger is, is recognizing um, that, that people are sinning against God, you know, or, or that there's an injustice that needs to be righted, I think we can, it's, it, that's, that's a safer place to, to, to use our anger to fuel change. You know, mm. I think it's care be careful with this because a lot of times we, we, we think our anger is always righteous. When, sure. when you're experiencing it, it always feels like you're right to be angry, that's right. especially when someone has wronged me. But, I, you know, Jesus is not worried about people who have wronged him. That's right. He's worried about people who are dishonoring the Lord. Yeah. And that's, that's the thing. Jesus wasn't getting anything out of what the money changers were doing. But the families that were running the Sanhedrin and that kind of controlled the Jewish religion at that point, they were making a ton of money off of this. Mm -hmm. They were ripping people off. That made him angry. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things I try to... For myself, is if it is this selfish anger? Because if it involves me, then I really need to dial back and be very careful with it. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, like uh, uh, a few months ago, you had that news story that made the news about that televangelist who was trying to raise millions of dollars to buy a new super duper jet. That kind of stuff makes me mad because I know there are going to be people who watch him and are going to send him money that they really need themselves, and they're going to send it in so that he can get a stupid jet that he doesn't need, you know. And they're going to go without food or without who knows what. You know, that makes me angry. Mm -hmm. and, and that's not touching me. Now, that doesn't mean I have the right to go down to Louisiana and punch him in the face either. I might like to, but I won't. But that's the difference between, to me, righteous anger and selfish anger. Is When my anger is about me, it's usually, it's either misplaced or it's really exaggerated. Let's mm -hmm. put it that way. And so I think it's important when anger does come up to deal with my anger quickly yes. don't let it fester yeah romans 12 17 through 19 it says repay no one evil for evil but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all if possible so far as it depends on you <laughs> live peaceably with all beloved never avenge yourselves what if you have that underline that never avenge yourselves but leave it to the wrath of god for it is written vengeance is mine i will repay says the lord like this is where I think we get uh, stuck with the wrong kind of anger is when we feel like we need to retaliate or we need to uh, repay someone for what they're doing. That's the wrong. That's not righteous anger. That's the wrong kind of anger. Yeah, God is not calling either you or me to be part of the Avengers. You don't get to go <laughs> revenge yourself. Sorry about that. <laughs> just it just doesn't work that way. I wish it did, but it but it doesn't. <laughs> 
It doesn't. Yeah, and I, and I think back to that verse we quoted earlier about let, don't let the sun go down on your anger. It's like you were saying, you need to deal with it as quickly as you can. I like Paul says here, if possible, so far as depends on you, live peaceably with all. So Paul recognizes it's going to be harder for some of us than others. Have you noticed, though, that there are times when you get angry and if you don't deal with it that day, that you stew about it? Oh, and you can't sleep sometimes because you're stewing over yep. what oh, someone yeah. has done. Like that's, I think that's giving the enemy a foothold in our lives. Mm -hmm. and, it, and anger very quickly can return into resentment, yep. um, bitterness, yep. hatred. And those are, those are things we really don't want to take root in our lives. And so much better to deal with it as soon as possible, to address the problem as quickly as possible, yep. and to do it with love. Right. And I think that's what anger actually uh, is it, it, if you don't deal with it, it it will always kind of grow, and then you have that what Hebrews talks about that root of bitterness that springs up. Mm -hmm. I think that comes from anger or resentment that I, I refuse to deal with, and it just sits there inside like a cancer, mm -hmm. and then it will eat you up if so. And the sooner you deal with it, the better. It's easier to deal with my anger with somebody today than it is to wait a week or a month or mm -hmm. a year and then deal with it. Because then I've had a whole year to stew about it and exaggerate it and yeah. get myself all worked up and ruin mm -hmm. my blood pressure and all that for nothing. Yeah. So it's like, just deal with it now. But pay attention too to the kind of the big topics in the world that make you angry. You know, if you yeah. get really angry um, at, at, you know, the sex trade or you get really angry with, you know, world hunger or poverty or whatever, if those things make you angry continually, that's maybe a good, good indicator that that's part of your, supposed to be part of your ministry, that the Lord is giving you a righteous anger and he wants you to actually, you know, partner with him to see, to see solutions come forward. You know, if, if that's, that's a different kind of anger, and I think that's kind of what we're trying to differentiate here, is that there is a very big difference between anger that, that, that the Lord is stirring up because he mm -hmm. wants us to write something right. versus personal anger or personal offense at how we've been treated. Yeah, a, a pastor uh, said uh, years ago, and he, he wrote a little book about it too, that, that when you find something in your life that just wrecks you, that you, you get upset about it, it, ju it ju you just like, oh, this is just, this is horrible. That is a probably really good sign God's calling you to do something in that area, whatever, whatever it is. Like you're saying, it could be anything. Um, and it could be local or it could be worldwide or it could be both. But yeah, when you get all worked up about something, that's probably a sign there's, you need to be doing something there, whatever, whatever it is, who knows. And that's one of the ways, by the way, to deal with your anger. If, if, if I feel like I'm doing something that's making a difference, even if it's just a little teeny difference, my anger goes down because mm -hmm. I'm not no longer frustrated that I just can't do a darn thing. It turns out I can do something. Mm -hmm. And if I do that something, that will help with my anger. Absolutely. That's a way of speaking the truth in love to a broader yep. topic or to, a, to something that's bigger. Yeah. And then, of course, you got to just, you know, ultimately, you have to give it to God and let mm -hmm. him deal with it. Okay. I may think that so-and-so deserves this, that, or the other thing. But you know what? I deserve hell. So uh, and, and Jesus saved me, so I'm going to just let God work this all out and stop trying to play God by taking vengeance because that's what you do. When, you're, when you step in to try and get revenge or whatever, you are playing God, and that's mm -hmm. bad. All right. Well, we hope you enjoy your discussion today. Uh, we would encourage you again to be vulnerable. Absolutely. And let's close in prayer. Father, we just uh, thank you that you uh, have the desire and the ability to grow within us the patience that we need. The patience that will be a perfectly balanced kind of patience, Lord, where it won't stop us from becoming angry or uh, worked up about sin and things that need to be dealt with. But on the other hand, Lord, it will restrain our selfishness and it will help us to become more like Christ. And we pray, Lord, that you would grow this fruit in each of our hearts and that uh, this lesson tonight will help us to have made some progress in that area and we thank you in Jesus name. Amen. Yeah.